This is one of the best analogies I've ever heard. Check it out. Let's imagine you're on the security duty at a bank and you've suddenly been told that there's a robbery and a bank vault has been opened. There, there are two possibilities. You've got some robber got in and either it was an inside job and the robber had the code to open the vault or it was just lucky random fiddling. What would you expect if it was an inside job? You would expect that the robber would go directly to the combination that would pop open the vault. Now, it might be that he got incredibly lucky, but you're over overwhelming expectation based on your knowledge of the improbability of finding that combination is that the robber will crack the code and open the vault. The universe was an inside job. So this is essentially the fine-tuning argument. Um, and while I think the fine-tuning argument is probably the most persuasive case for God that there is, I, th I think there's some significant issues with it that uh, make it where I'm not persuaded that that means there is a God. Um, so the first issue is that he, he makes a sort of false dichotomy. Um, either it's the case that there's somebody randomly typing in the codes, or there's a mind who knew the code and got the code right. Uh, there's no reason to presume this. There's lots and lots of other options. Um, so, for instance, the universe could be necessary. There could be only one code the universe could possibly have, and we just don't know that. Or there could be lots and lots and lots of different universes out there, I mean, not just including our own, but um, we could live in a multiverse. Or it could be that there's, before our universe, there was lots of, of quote-unquote, attempted universes, and we don't know how many there were. Like, for example, if the universe has, like, an infinite number of permutations, the probability that one of them will form life narrows down to one if life is possible, which is 100%. There will be a universe with life will get given infinite attempts. It's sort of like the, um, the, the chimps and the typewriter analogy. So if you have an infinite number of chip, chimps typing on an infinite number of, of typewriters and give them an infinite amount of time, eventually one of them will produce uh, some miraculous work of philosophy perfectly, letter for letter, word for word, without, without ever having um, – been able to read, write, or anything just out of sheer probability because it's the once you get to things like infinities, uh, everything that's possible narrows to one. So if it's possible that a chimp will, for instance, produce um, one of the famous works of, of literature and history, it's going to happen. It's 100% certain. It's only miraculous probabilistically if we assume there's only one universe, which he assumes, and I don't know why you would make that assumption. Um, we don't have a good reason to, to think that that's the case, right? Uh, the next thing is that the, the universe is not fine-tuned for life. There are certain conditions that are well-tuned for life uh, in, in the sense that you have to have things like matter. But there's conditions under which the universe could form that would be much, much better for life. So if your goal as a creator is to create life, it would be disadvantageous to, uh, to make a universe that's outright hostile to life, which our universe, the majority of the universe, is hostile to life, as we know it at least. Um, and then the, the last thing that I'll point out is that to have a probability to – um, have this sort of it's it's improbable and that's my reason for thinking god must have done it you need a sample set so in order to have a probabilistic analysis um you're going to need something other than the the thing that's being analyzed right so for instance if i want to know what the probability of grabbing a red gumball out of a jar is i need to know how many other gumballs are in that jar and what their colors are um so what if there are no no red gumballs in the jar? Well, then the probability is zero. Um, but if there's one red gumball, but I don't know if maybe there's a hundred blue gumballs. If there's a hundred blue gumballs, then I know that there's only a one percent chance of me grabbing uh, a red gumball. Uh, but the only reason I know that is because I have a sample set. With the universe, we only have a sample set of one. We do not have anything else to draw from, and so we don't have a way to make a probabilistic analysis about that. But in summation, I do think this is the best argument for the existence of God that I've ever encountered. It's the most persuasive. Um, however, the just the sheer number of problems um, it has is, is telling about my position on most other uh, arguments for the existence of God. Uh, to say that almost all of them have significant issues, I've never encountered one that didn't have some sort of significant issues like this. This one has the fewest issues and is the most persuasive.